Hi, I'm Nikki, and this is a short video to help you understand what overwhelm is and how you can avoid it, how you can stop it. So overwhelm comes from when our emotions and our feelings are just too much, our thoughts are too busy, and it's a little bit like a traffic jam. They just all get backed up. I don't know if you've ever been on the M25, especially before they put the speed limiters in. You'd be sailing along at 60, 70 miles an hour, sometimes a bit more if you're a bit like that way, and you would suddenly come to a real, real stop. And then it starts again, and you'd have no reason why. Our thoughts are a little bit like that. Sometimes when there are external influences as well as internal influences, that we don't know what to do with the information, the feelings, the thoughts, or what's going on around us, those thoughts, those feelings, those emotions can back up. And at that point, that's when we experience overwhelm, because we're desperately trying to find an exit but we can't get out of the situation or the feelings or the emotions or the thoughts. So the easiest way to help you resolve that is to notice the triggers. Notice when you start feeling that sense of overwhelm because it doesn't come from the point where it gets too much and you feel overwhelmed. There's a build up to it just like there is in a traffic jam. So notice what that is and become aware of it because quite often the reason you become overwhelmed and unable to deal with situations is because you haven't been aware of the preamble b before that point. So start noticing what is it that creates those feelings, that backup of thoughts, emotions and, and feelings. Then start using some strategies or techniques to divert, to take a B route and A route off the motorway that's about to get backed up or even just pull off in the service station. An easy techniques to do is to be able to use your breath. It's very underrated, but very, very powerful in being able to create an exit strategy from the feelings of overwhelm. And the reason that is, is because when you feel anxious and overwhelmed or things are getting too much, there's something called your sympathetic nervous system that gets switched on and that heightens your sense of alert. So that increases the stress hormones. And stress hormones are created when we feel anxious and overwhelmed as well. So that's where the buildup starts coming from. So the easiest thing to do is to pause and take a breath. Now there are many, many different strategies which I won't go into on this video because you can find them elsewhere and I've covered them before. Take yourself away from the situation is another really good strategy. So if there are external influences that are creating a sense of overwhelm, if you can remove yourself from that situation, distract yourself, so it might just be going into another room, going for a walk, listening to some music, pattern interrupt. And it is, again, it's a little bit like noticing that on the motorway, the traffic's backing up or you're stuck in a queue and making the conscious decision to take the exit slip road. Another way of being able to help stop overwhelm is to be able to reduce the expectations in the first place. So quite often we get in this place where we think we have these superhero capes that we can put on all the time and be able to do with absolutely anything and everything, no matter what gets thrown at us. We all have a finite amount of resilience, some more than others. And at any given time, we can allow ourselves to just notice that it's just a little bit too much. So a sense of compassion and reducing the level of expectation, which invariably is self-driven, it comes from within. And just being kind to yourself, taking some time out. And those of you who followed me or know me, uh, know that I'm a, a great advocate of something called the replenishing graph. And that is finding that sense of balance. So we all have factors that drain us. We all have things in our lives that deplete us of our energy, of our levels of happiness. And then we are not so resilient when tough times come. And they do come, that's what life is about. It's the ups and downs. But when things go down, you want to be able to feel resilient and just be able to almost surf the difficulties, the strife, the things that, that make life challenging. So make sure that you prioritize yourself enough that you do enough of those things that boost your sense of self-worth, boost your happiness, Give yourself time out, time to wind down, engage with other people because how we recharge our internal batteries is very individual and there's no right or wrong way. So make sure that you are doing enough on a regular basis to be able to keep your jug very much topped up 
So when those additional pressures or external stresses do come along, you are not coming from a place of feeling depleted because that's probably the quickest way to feel overcome, overwhelmed is when you are depleted. So when I say self-care is necessary, I mean that self-care is important for you to be able to be resilient to life's ups and downs. And if you value being there for other people, it's necessary because if you are not firing on all cylinders, then you cannot possibly be there for those people who might need you. So to recap how to prevent feeling overwhelmed, notice the preamble before that overwhelmed feeling occurs. Is it external stresses? Is it going to bed late, be drinking too much caffeine, not taking care of yourself? Is it getting involved in other people's dramas, thinking that you need to be there for everybody and resolve everybody's issues? Is it because you are just trying to deal with too much and setting the bar too high? So notice what that is before the traffic jam occurs and then start creating lists of what you can do to exit that direct route down the motorway to overwhelm. And that might be using breathing, coping strategies that you know work for you, such as listening to music, going for a walk in nature, reading, having a hot bath, taking yourself away from a situation, especially if there's nothing that you can do about it. Start making a list of those things and make sure that you do do every day things that are important to you to maintain your level of resilience because the moment you get overwhelmed is when that resilience is depleted. So I hope you found this video really useful. What I'd love you to do is to send me some comments or an email and let me know what, what you thought of the video, whether it was useful and other subjects that you'd like me to cover. Thank you for your time in listening to this and have a great day.